I'd like to start first by showing you three images, which I call In the Footsteps of. This is a photograph of Paul Cezanne painting in the landscape in Aix-en-Provence in 1904. And at that time he said, one does not put oneself in place of the past, one only adds a new link. I am the primitive of a new art. It's a very important statement for things that we do in our school. The second image is that of Leo Marschutz, who was a German artist from Nuremberg, Germany, painting in Aix-en-Provence in 1932. And third, our very own Amelia. <laughs> in the landscape in 2022. So that is 120 years of footsteps. Uh, and I know Amelia has her story, and I would say the stories are important because this art school has been so transformational for so many people. I think this is because it is a school based not on acquiring technical skills, or even arriving at a final product, but on seeing, seeing into the world and into ourselves. The school's foundational principles underline vision, imagination, dialogue, connection, and collaboration, and it strives to develop what we call, we don't call it this, but many people do, beginner's mind. Taking a fresh look at everything. Uh, most of the students in the school were complete beginners when they arrived, and I believe that their stories tonight, if you get to talk to them, it happens to help the, how they got to the school actually relate to what the school is about. I guess very quickly, I would say I'm a case in point, because actually I majored in psychology and was teaching in an elementary school in Greenville in 1974. And my friend, Nanette, who's yeah. sitting right there, who wanted to come study French and wanted me to come with her, and I was like, I don't want to study French. And she said, but we're going to go see Cat Stevens. <laughs> and, uh, and that's why I came with them to France. And ultimately, she would invite me to X at Christmas, and they went out painting, and I asked them, what do I do while you're painting? And they gave me watercolors and said, go sit under that tree and paint what you see. And that's the first painting I ever thought about doing. And the rest is history. I've been living and working. My studio is at the Chateau Noir for the last 47 years. So that's a little bit my story. I think, though, we want to go to actually what this talk is briefly about, the Mont Saint Victoire, 1904. I'd sort of like to talk about Leo Marschutz's story. Leo Marschutz was a German artist from Nuremberg. He started painting when he was 13, and around 1920 he went to Berlin and he ran into the work of Cezanne, and it changed the way that he thought he had to paint. And there was a painting, this painting, that was moving around from collector to gallery to gallery in Berlin. His friend did not want to buy this painting because it had canvas showing. And she thought, it's not finished. Risky business. And he said, no. It's one of the greatest paintings he did. You have to buy it, which she did. She sold it a year later, and she said, thank you, Leo, for some money. Go to X, where Cezanne painted because you love his work so much. He came to X. He recognized Cezanne's coachman on the Cour Mirabeau, who was still alive. He asked him to a play, take him to a place where Cezanne painted. The coachman said yes. The coachman went out a long dirt road, Leo was lost, and he rounded the curve, and he rode 
right into the site of the painting that he'd been looking at for a year in Nuremberg. And he said, me voilà un pays connu. I'm in a country that I know. The coachman continued about a kilometer. And on the left, he discovered the Chateau Noir. There was a room for rent. He took it and stayed there for the summer. He came back the next year and stayed in this. Go back just a second. The other way, this part of the chateau, which was Paul Cezanne's old studio, eventually moved to the Maison Maria, painted by Cezanne. He lived there for the next 40 years. Uh, when he came to Aix, when he, as a painter in Germany, he started painting when he was 13, and we'll show an image of that work. This is a black and white painting that he did when he was 13. When he came to Aix-en-Provence and discovered, sort of influenced by El Greco, big paintings, a very famous German director bought this painting, so his father said, okay, you can be an artist. But when he came to Aix, he said, I have to start over, and one of the first paintings he did at the Chateau Noir is this Mont saint painting. So that changed everything for him in terms of his painting. And there's a long story about his work that I won't get into. But the other thing that was very important, at the Chateau Noir, a young art historian came and took a room at the Chateau working on his medieval art thesis. And he had a Leica camera. And Leo said, come with me. We we're going to go on our bicycles. And they went around and took all of the first photographs of Cezanne motifs. That art historian was actually the young John Raywald, who went on to become a great art uh, scholar and actually Cezanne scholar, very well-known Cezanne scholar. And those photographs are now in the National Gallery uh, archives, which we got to see just the other day. They. <coughs> This is Cezanne's studio. John Raywald left to go to the United States during the war, the beginning of the war, and over a period of years, Aix-en-Provence decided they were gonna tear down Cezanne's studio and build an apartment building. John Raywald and Leo Marchus and others raised the money to buy the studio and eventually, next slide, donate it to Aix-en-Provence, and now it's a museum that people can actually go and see where Cezanne worked. There's lots of images of that uh, in the other photographs that we have turning. Leo, on the other hand, his family went to California during the war. They begged him to come, he was Jewish, and he said, if I leave Aix, I will never do the work that I need to do. I'm not coming. He stayed in Aix. He was put into a camp as a German, not, not because he was Jewish, because he was German, because they rounded off all the Germans. Eventually he was let out, his papers were forged. But when the Nazis came to Aix, they knew he was out in the country, and there's lots of frightening stories about him hiding out in the caves with the, with the Nazis coming out to look for him. So he had, he had tough times in Aix, but he decided he had to stay, or he would not be the work, be able to do the work he could do. The work that he could do, if we can see the next slide, this is a beautiful image of Aix-en-Provence. And Leo is right here at his litho press, and he spent years and years and years making wild lithographs directly from the streets of Aix. He spent 30 years working in the, in the streets of Aix. Next, Rosa. Very quickly though, the third thing that he did is he started teaching a painting class at a little study abroad program in X in 1960. He taught there for 10 years, and some of the people here can tell you most of his students were French majors, political science majors, every kind of major except an art major. And many of those students are here tonight and can tell you he was probably the most important teacher they ever had. And some of those students actually came back to Aix after they graduated 
and became artists themselves. And eventually he and two of his associates would start the Leo Marshall School of Painting and Drawing in 1972. The reason he started this school is really important because probably most of the students that are here tonight are not art majors. The students that he taught in the study abroad program were not art majors. But Leo and Oscar Kakashka and Giacometti and even Pablo Picasso were upset in 1972 because they felt that seeing was getting a bad rap. And so he decided to start an art school where seeing was the most important thing. That means looking out at the world, trying to paint what you see, as well as looking inside yourself to try to figure out how you see. And so that has been, I think, if you talk to people, one of the most important things about the art school, as well as the most important, second most important thing, to go into the museums and study the great masters from 40,000 BC until today in every culture and to see if great artworks in all of their differences might have something in common that you can learn from to figure out how you want to paint. So those are the two elements that are fundamental for this school. And so again, if we go to the next slide, you'll see that this first bus in 1972, 11 students, probably nine of them were French majors or political science majors or hippies or whatever they never <laughs> did. Uh, $500 donated to the school by Henry Perlman, who was a great Cezanne collector, to buy the police bus. <laughs> And that was actually my first job in the school around 1977. I think they started letting me drive the bus. <laughs> so quickly, we will jump a few years ahead to show you some images of the beautiful first high school program ever at the Martian School that took place this summer. I was a little worried about it thinking, how do you teach 16-year-olds? But they were amazing. So here are a few things that we did in the summer school. They painted it out into the... There's Rachel on the landscape. There they come in, coming home with a big fish. We also have the possibility to follow in the footsteps of people like Cezanne and Van Gogh, so we can go to the exact spot where they painted, take larger reproductions, and kind of study how what they see out there in terms of the motif relates to what the painter did and the artist. That's really in the, in the artwork. We also, with our wonderful, my favorite teacher in the Marshall School, Kathleen Keenan teaches creative writing. So we're linking writing to painting. We're also linking music to painting. And this is a lovely shot of the students going to the opera in X. Idomeneo, they saw. I also took my son in a, at intermission. I turned around and said, how do you like it? And he said, I hate you. <laughs> Anyway, they did see it. Next. And then we went to Paris, and here are a few of the great works that we would sit down in front of for sometimes an hour to talk about what is actually happening in the paintings. And that conversation, there's nothing better than looking at a painting for an hour than looking, the best thing is looking at a painting for an hour with a group. And that's part of what we also do. These are, this is a Cezanne painting and we ended uh, with a large painting of uh, the water lilies of Monet because during the year we also take the students to Giverny where they can work for seven or eight days in the gardens in Giverny and in the spring we take the students to Venice to work for seven eight days in Venice, and finally, 
just a little picture of the students having fun after a long day out in the landscape. They really loved each other, and that's what made this program so wonderful. And so, I thank you all. Marshoot School. I am Jennifer Griffin. I'm the mother of Amelia Myrie, and I'm just going to ask her to say a couple of words about what Marshoots meant to her. She spent her gap year there in 2020, and then went back last summer. And Amelia, tell everyone why we feel so passionately about Marshoots and how it transformed your life. Yes, thank you. Thanks everyone for being here. Um, I absolutely loved my year at Marshoots, if you can't tell. I extended for 11 months, and then I went back last summer, so I spent as much time there as I could. And um, what was most meaningful to me was seeing how all of the students in my group during the COVID year, um, who were writers and musicians and students from all different backgrounds, began to saw them, see themselves as artists because of the way that they teach um, a, you to look into nature and um, transform that into something visual. Um, and my most spectacular memory was certainly painting in Monet's gardens in Giverny and seeing the water lilies at sunrise the way he would have seen them. Um, it's a spectacular school and my professor relationships were what kept me there for so long. So thank you to everyone in the Marshoots community. I would, Nick, if you'd like to just say a couple words. Nick was the teacher. Nick, so Michelle was the high school teacher at Georgetown Day School, where Amelia was uh, was learning about art. Nick filled in as a substitute. They started talking about Marshoots because Nick had been a student there for 13 years. So Nick, just a, a brief word of why it was so important. And then I would encourage everybody to grab anyone with a, that says they're a Marshoots alum and ask them about their experience because they really do go back, now, now, back to the 1970s. And it shows the devotion to Alan and the school and Leo Marshoots' tr um, tradition. Uh, thanks, Jennifer. Sure. Ooh, OK. I don't want to stand where you're standing. I'm from the speaker. Um, thanks for having us, by the way. This is really yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alan talked about how a lot of the students that come to the school aren't actually art majors. I was an English major, but I never painted um, before I came. And I think the thing that I think is most important, or the thing that the Marshall School does really, really well, is through painting, what they're really doing is sharpening our ability to observe. Mm. Our ability to connect with what we're perceiving in the world and what we're uh, perceiving in each other. And that, that's not only important um, for painting, but it's also important for just who our intrinsic capabilities as humans um, to perceive and observe and be connected to the world through our senses and how we connect with each other. Um, so I don't know that there's another place really like the Marshall School that can teach something so, um, I don't want to say overlooked, but kind of slippery and ephemeral, you know what I mean? Um, so for any, whatever your background is, whatever you're studying, I really do think this, this, this training in our human capacity to be sensitive, to be connected to the world around us can apply to, to so many different fields um, beyond the canvas, and I really um, encourage all of you to check it out. Our goal tonight really is to introduce the Marshoot School to area schools so that we can create partnerships. GDS has been a long partner of Marshoots. A number of students have gone through the program. But St. Albans, I know, is here tonight, Potomac School, Murray. We, we really believe that these area schools should know about Marshoots. And so Rose uh, will just say a quick word on how to connect to her. She's a, an alum, but also now the administrator of the school, and she can give you more information. Jennifer, Jennifer. Hey. If before Rose, can I say something? Oh my oh, God! This is a absolutely. <laughs> I would never say no to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma C. Grandma C. Yay! No, I just 
I have to say, there are so many parents here, educators here, and maybe grandmothers, and to watch and witness what Marshoots meant to my granddaughter, I mean, I don't throw around the word life-changing lightly, but this is an extraordinary place, and I just can't encourage you enough if you know students who have this interest or even have an inkling of this interest, send them to Marshoots because it's remarkable. I, I had the opportunity, Amelia went back for a second time this summer and I happened to join her for a few days in a very small studio apartment in the heart of X and we had during a ball. During the heat wave, right? during the heat wave. <laughs> we had a ball, but it's, it's an extraordinary environment and, and influence, I mean, I mean, I don't know how many art galleries went to, but, you know, museums, but it was just, it's an amazing place, and I just, I had, I felt compelled sitting, standing over there in that doorway to say, as a grandparent, and to all you parents and all you educators, this is really extraordinary. So please take this very seriously. not just a study abroad program. We all know, we've all heard about many study abroad programs. We've all done study abroad programs. This is a boutique gem that is just very different. So. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, I, like so many of pe the pe people you've heard from, was a student who went to the school for a short amount of time and tried to keep extending that time over and over and over. That's going to be a common theme you all hear, I'm sure, from the alumni you talk to. Another one is what Grandma C said was life-changing. I've talked to so many alums and they that's sort of the top um, adjective they use about their experience. So this past summer we had such a great time with our high school students. It was really, it was four weeks. It was so lovely to have high school students because um, we've used to, we used to sort of focus mostly on college age kids and we're really trying to open up the um, constituency that we gear our programs toward and high school students have just been such a wonderful um, addition to our programs and this summer there were a couple little key phrases that we kept saying that I think really resonated with the high school students and then with us as well and one of those is collaboration over competition. And that's something that's so important in the Marshoots thing that maybe we haven't defined in that specific manner before, but I think with the high school students that really resonates. So I'm so looking forward to speaking with all of you, um, especially the teachers and administrators at the high schools and the students and the parents. Um, you can see around there's little cards and flyers and stuff with my contact info on there, and I'll talk to you tonight, but um, I'm always open to talk about the programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are Leo Marshoot's books for sale if you're interested. There are also is more information, and Rose will get your emails and send you whatever you need. Um, but thank you for being here tonight. Please grab a drink, eat more food, and stay as long as you'd like. We're very happy you're here. Thank you. Thank you.